the Filecoin virtual machine network upgrade went live last week, introducing smart contracts and enabling developers to design decentralized applications on the Filecoin network. Native token files surged 18% ahead of the upgrade before giving back much of those gains. Joining us now is Molly McKinley. She's the head of engineering at Protocol Labs, the company behind decentralized file storage network Filecoin. Molly, welcome to the show. How did the upgrade go and uh, what does it accomplish to enhance the Filecoin network for those who don't know what the Filecoin network is all about? Absolutely. It was a great upgrade. Um, we definitely had, uh, you know, smooth operations. There was, um, you know, all, all network nodes were able to update smoothly. Um, there were, I think, a couple of, uh, you know, developer tweaks. Suddenly there's smart contracts and um, getting everyone to be able to start transferring their Filecoin into um, smart contract enabled wallets and um, kind of like applications that can start making use of that Filecoin from a user deploy perspective. Um, there were a couple early hiccups that were all resolved super smoothly and quickly. So big thank you to everyone who was part of um, that launch. And this is super exciting for the Filecoin ecosystem because uh, for the last two and a half years of Filecoin mainnet, um, we've had uh, mostly just storage providers and folks storing data on the Filecoin network. And that's really what Filecoin um, is, is at the core here. We're trying to be a robust foundation for humanity's most important information, uh, making sure that data can be stored in a decentralized network of storage parties. Um, and what what FEM brings is user programmability on top of that storage. So now anyone can deploy a smart contract um, that can start working with uh, like liquidity solutions between storage providers and clients um, that can start automating the um, refresh of that data within the network over time so that you can have very long term, uh, maybe even permanent uh, storage within the Filecoin ecosystem. Um, and that's a, a really exciting moment for the whole Filecoin community. Everyone was <laughs> very, very looking forward to this. Um, and it's been awesome to see kind of the uptick since launch. It's by far <laughs> exceeded our wildest dreams. We were like, maybe we'll have 100 contracts on the network within the first month. And then we saw 300 contracts on the network within the first day. And so so uh, just been really amazing to see the early builders community um, take to the, the network and start deploying lots of really exciting applications. We now have auto renewing NFT contracts that are making it so that NFTs stay on Filecoin long term. We have AI generative art that is using compute over the data in Filecoin to create new um, and it, like AI images for NFTs that then end up stored on Filecoin um, and are utilizing kind of the, the data and, and reimbursing the creators of that data um, to actually push that forward um, and, and have an ethical AI system that actually um, re recurs value to the original creators when new um, AI images are generated from their work. And so it's just really awesome to see all of these new applications coming into being and deploying on Filecoin. So if, if you've been on before and, and you've explained Filecoin, but I mean, now that, especially now that you have smart contracts, can you explain the difference between Filecoin and let's say the Ethereum network? Why would somebody use Filecoin versus Ethereum? Or even Ethereum? AWS. Totally. Um, and, and I'd love to explain both of those. Um, so versus, say, Ethereum, we are so excited about um, Filecoin and FEM because it works so great hand in hand with other blockchain ecosystems. We actually designed FEM to use the EVM runtime directly so you can bring any smart contract from Ethereum over to Filecoin with no changes. And that enables really smooth bridging. Um, and what you can get in Filecoin that isn't available in any other blockchain ecosystem is verifiable long-term large-scale storage of data and that you know no other blockchain um, brings that verifiability that large-scale storage we have something like 13 exabytes of storage capacity in Filecoin that we are eagerly storing humanity's information into um, and a network of decentralized providers that verifiably prove that they are storing your data over time um, and that's what you know compares to something like AWS where now you know instead of having to trust AWS and have a central point of faith
failure on AWS if your data is still resilient and stored. Now you have a decentralized network of parties that you can resiliently store your data across um, and you get proofs, verifiable proofs over time that your data is being stored correctly. Um, and that's you know very appealing for folks that um, really care about data resilience, um, that don't want to have a central point of failure um, and want to have a distributed, um, diverse network of parties who are storing their data um, and that, that maybe want something you know from an NFT context really want to verify that that data persists over time and say use it in other smart contracts. All right. You kind of touched on this briefly, but what does the role of artificial intelligence play on Filecoin? And, and I, we've also reported in the past how you guys are launching nodes in space. Uh, how is uh, the space project going? Space products going awesome. And, and really the intersection of those two that we're super excited about um, is bringing compute into the Filecoin ecosystem. Um, so Filecoin has stored, you know, I think over 600, maybe now over 750 petabytes of useful data on the network and bringing compute to that data helps make it much more useful and actionable for all of the parties um, who are making use of it. And um, this really is exciting in the kind of like edge computing space for space as well, because you have all of this data that's being generated, um, you know, say in the International Space Station or on a moon base and being able to do distributed computation at the edge and only send back the results of that computation is also very, very appealing. And so we were just talking with uh, with some of the folks uh, part of that space program a couple weeks ago at East Denver um, about the opportunities there to bring this decentralized computation into the space context as well. Um, and so with AI, we're seeing just much, much more demand for um, generative compute over open data sets that can generate large amounts of data that you also want to store in large um, decentralized systems. Uh, Molly, I, 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 ha I hate to say this, but uh, you're combining AI and outer space and space satellites. I saw this movie once. It involved Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. I, 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 totally. I am uh, very much here in terms of like, making sure that we don't release the, the evil robots on the world um, and making sure that, you know, the, the sorts of AI well, computing they have all our data. is not evil. Yeah. I, right. I don't want um, the apocalypse. Just right, right, not today, Me neither. not this week. Hopefully it's just, um, you know, more, more close. generative, too close. valuable too outcomes close for us already. all. All right. Yeah. Molly, thank you so much for joining us. That was Protocol Labs Head of Engineering, Molly McKinley.